Transformers Tactical Arena was updated to version 1.3 in the last week of April 2022. You can tell when new versions are available because the app icon changes color. <laughs> this one kinda has an American flag theme. They probably should have saved that for a July update. <laughs> anyway, as my great aunt used to say, So, what's new? <laughs> well, a lot. This was a surprising update, as version 1.2 was released just last month. Although, if you look at the update history, they're maintaining monthly updates. Nice. If you want to see the notes for the current update, that's available at the settings screen. That's where you can find a button to access the release notes. The first item says, Player Profiles, a new custom avatar and banner will represent you in battle. It's kinda cute, but it makes the score harder to read. Many of the banners are quite busy. Plus, they appear to be sized for mobile screens. So it's not very impressive looking on an Apple TV or a Mac. I picked Optimus Prime for the avatar and Optimus Prime for the background. <laughs> it's pretty obvious I like Optimus Prime. But I'm not too excited about this particular change. But what do you think? Do you like the new banners? You can let everyone know in the comments. There's also another addition to Character Flair. Your ranking in the Champion League is displayed too. The Champion League Frames item says, Players now earn Champion League Avatar frames based on how they ranked in the previous league. In other words, you get a Roman numeral on your character banner to represent your rank. One is for Challenger, two is for Warrior, three is for Hero, four is for Champion, and five is for Prime. Since I finished at the Hero rank in the previous Champion League, my avatar shows the Roman numeral three. More info on the Prime rank is later in this video. Right now, moving on to the next item in the release notes. In the events section it says, Introduction of limited time events with the weekly turret challenge. Destroy enemy turrets in ranked battles to earn rewards before the week is over. This is another sign that Red Games Co. is becoming less stingy with Transformers Tactical Arena. While it still takes considerable effort to max out every card, and there now are 58 cards, the game feels more generous now. As an example, you can lose every battle, but as long as you can destroy at least some towers, you can complete this event. If you destroy 100 turrets in time, that's three good crates, one mega, and two super crates. Since I was already very likely to destroy 100 towers this week, this event was not much of a problem. Basically, the developers clearly want players playing. You can especially see that with the next item. It's entitled Daily Rewards. It says, Log in every day to collect rewards. Ha! The Skinner Box is in full effect. And now, even if you just glance at the screen and press a button, that's a crate. On the sixth consecutive day, that's a mega crate. And on the seventh day, that's a super crate. The sad truth is that this type of game design works. During the previous Champion League, I noticed that there were around 16,000 players. During the second Champion League, there are over 25,000 players. That's more than a 50% increase in 10 days. Amazing. Also, I think they fixed the achievements, as now all of them are showing for me. Well, except the hidden achievement. I'm not sure what that achievement is about. I'm not sure if it's about collecting all the cards, but new cards and new abilities are being added all the time. That leads to the next two items on the release notes. There's a new Prime ability, the Chimera Stone. At least, I think that's how it's pronounced. That's not what I call it though. I call it the Disco Ball. <laughs> Turn it to dust. I suppose you could also call it Overpowered, as it dramatically changes the strategies, tactics, and the pacing of the game. Before version 1.3, I couldn't reach Prime Rank. After the update, I got Prime Rank on the same day. 
over 5,000 points on the global leaderboards is how to reach prime rank. I'll explain how I did that later in this video, but for now, let's look at those new cards. First up is the Repulse Tower. <laughs> this thing's adorable. It pushes back enemies and inflicts minor damage. While that is cute, I'm not sure if it's going to be effective. There are many ways to manage the little hordes of enemies. Plus, I haven't tried it in a real battle yet, as it would get wrecked at such a low level. That's the same story for Trailbreaker. He can target two enemies at once. This is useful when some smaller enemies are surrounding a larger enemy. He's not good for fighting lots of enemies though. The minion horde would overwhelm Trailbreaker. The third new card is Dark Energon Strike. This does instant damage to up to three targets in a specific area. This attack can be used anywhere in the arena. The problem with this attack is that it's expensive. Six Energon is a lot of energy. There's also another downside to all new cards. It means more grinding. Ugh. Right now, these cards are not very effective because they need to be leveled up first. Considering that two of the three new cards are rare, that's going to take a while. And after you find a card that you like, there's still a strong chance it might get nerfed. Mirage got hit bad this update, as he now has 25% less health and does 17% less damage. The combo cooldown is almost twice as long too. Other cards did see a significant boost. The Inferno Cannon Explosion does 59% more damage, which is somewhat closer to Shockwave's self-destruct damage, but Shockwave still does way more damage. I'm surprised that Shockwave didn't get nerfed. I posted about that on Reddit. He's basically a suicide bomber that can hit two towers at once. That does more damage than a tactical nuke. But the real news here is the railgun. Wow, that got nerfed hard. If you're not familiar with that gaming term, it means that a weapon or ability has been dramatically reduced in power, so much so that it feels similar to the toy. Yet, while I disagreed with the changes in version 1.1, here, the railgun is overpowered. Even after these changes, it's still a great card. That's how I got to prime rank. I used the rail gun with the disco ball. That ability causes your defensive units to fight quicker, much quicker. So much so that the rail gun starts to feel like a machine gun. Human players are quickly adapting to this strategy, but the computer, it hasn't caught on yet. <laughs> if the AI doesn't immediately attack or at least distract the rail gun, it's goodbye tower. Only nine energon is needed to quickly destroy a tower. That's a lot more fun than sending Starscream over to the other side half a dozen times. Anyway, that's the version 1.3 update. What do you think? Do you like it? Overall, I think it's a good update. Thanks for watching.